Okay, so I'm pretty angry right now because I have three batteries I did not fly. And I was in the middle of a battery and I'm flying this today. It's my only working quad. And my Galdang battery died on my screen, but the Galdang screen can't just take any voltage anymore because I fried the circuit that would take from the plug in here. So it's kind of toasted and I have a spare battery and it's charged and I left it at home. So I'm three batteries shy of a, of a good day of flying. But I just wanted to, uh, to talk about my experiences lately. Today has been a very, very good day because I mapped out this uh, course. And I mapped it out up in these trees here. And it took me a long time to feel like I had a grip on the course, the trees enough to make a course. And I flew it with a pretty low tilt on my camera. And I've been flying only with a pretty low tilt. My props are destroyed. I don't have any new props. I'm using, I'm reusing changed ones. And I'm mostly flying pretty uh, low output batteries. So my best batteries are these 70C China Hobby Line 1300s. But I have to say that they just are not stellar performers. I got a bunch of 55C China Hobby Lines. And interestingly, it could be the balance from my quads and stuff like that. But uh, the 55C do not seem to perform particularly worse than the 70C. So... So then I just ordered these HRB batteries because uh, whoever their representative is on the internet or whatever, I talked to her in the messenger and I was like, all right, well, here's an opportunity. They're not that much. I'll buy a couple of these to try something besides China Hobby Line. And if you see the small wire and it's 45C, so these are actually interesting. Their output is, these are more powerful overall for higher speed. But for the low speeds that I'm flying, these seem very well balanced and they're very lightweight. So because I'm not hitting full throttle the whole time, they actually do very, very well. Another battery that I've been flying is these 30C China Hobby Lines, it's a T connector, 1300s, and these are a little older than these. These have only charged like three times, so they haven't really settled in. So at first, these were not as powerful as they are, but they are actually flying very well, and it's the same story. Actually, I do get a little more power from my 70C 1300, but because I'm flying so slow, I don't use it and these all do really well at the kind of flying that I'm doing which is low tilt camera but actually I think that I'm doing highly technical stuff in this place and I'm flying through a lot of branches and then my other batteries are I have two of these they're 1500s 50c uh, and those are nice because they they're 1500s and and I'm sure that people say oh I know exactly what you mean but they definitely pull harder for longer than a 1300 so if I'm gonna lay on the throttle and fly in a straight line a 1300 just does not really provide that much power they're great for little amounts of power at a time but they do not provide that constant flow that the larger battery does you know they just I can actually really push the 1500 and get a pretty good throttle for a pretty good long time without really feeling like I'm causing the battery any problems. And I don't get that out of any of this stuff. Uh, these feel that way pretty good at a moderate throttle. 
These are interesting and they are also pretty good. Um, my 55C batteries and my 70C batteries from China Hobby Line, they are not very consistent. So some of these batteries are really good and some of them are really not that good. These three are very, very similar to each other and my other China Hobby Line batteries that are the 30C are also pretty similar to each other, although these are more consistent than those. They do have a 70C version, but I decided to order the lower C version because it was a bit cheaper, and I also imagined it would be a bit lighter. And I have another quad that I'm building that's going to run 1806 motors in an effort to try to maximize the use of these smaller types of battery. So right now I'm flying cheapo 2205s and some kind of fairly humble prop and my batteries are holding up for that kind of performance. When I fly the Racer Star 5048s, which are kind of like the Cyclones, uh, the batteries die a lot faster. I do get a lot more power in Racer Star motors. I do get a lot more power, but I really crush the batteries and my batteries don't fly for very long. So because I can't afford the nice batteries that can handle that kind of abuse and provide that kind of power, I'm trying to gun it down a little bit to the 1806 motors and a smaller, you know, more humble performance, but but good if you have the right quad, you know. So then I'll be able to spend, I'll be able to get a lot of flying time in these small areas that I'm flying because I'm really, you know, I don't need to cover a lot of ground. I really only need to fly the 10 yards between one branch to another at any particular rate of speed. On this particular track, if you see that tree on the very end and this tree over here, I fly around this middle tree, from that tree, around this middle tree, and over to that tree out in the open. Otherwise, I try to keep it up in the branches so that, you know, I really, I can't hit very high speeds. So, if I get, I want to stay 5 inch, and if I get a slightly more humble power output, then for one thing, I can probably mash the throttle a little harder at times without having to worry about smashing into the branches so much. And the most important thing is I can make use of these cheaper batteries and still go and get plenty of flight time and, you know, I wish I could have the high performance, you know, of these 5-inch five, five racers that the multi-GP cats might run, but in all honesty, I just can't afford it, you know, um, I don't make that much money, I'm pretty poor. Uh, actually, here's all my money right here. <laughs> These batteries really cost me a lot, and they're pretty cheap for batteries, so. And I crashed my car, so I don't have a car, so I should be saving up for my car, but I don't. I just bought a ton of this batteries and stuff. And, uh, I just want to try to get the most out of the least, and, and then still have something that's compatible with, you know, the five inch kind of feel. Class. I don't know. I do want to upgrade eventually, but I don't want to buy really nice stuff and then crash into a tree and then, well, now I gotta buy more nice stuff. You know, if I can do a lot more crashing when I'm at a lower power level, then the damage will not be so much from each crash. Uh, the horses will be a little more manageable in this kind of environment since I can't go set up the nice big gates anyway. I'll probably just be able to grow the most if I, if I kind of keep the power down and maximize my flying time. The amount of actual stick hours I can get. I don't fly a simulator. I'm honestly, I'm not very interested in flying a simulator. I feel like I want to try it out to you know, but I have to buy a new computer to run those things, I think. Because I tried it before and I just couldn't do it. Maybe I need to buy a different controller. Uh, I wish that there was a... 
a better way to connect my fly sky. Maybe the flight controller trick with Beta Flight's latest update will be all right. I mean, I'm just not that excited about a simulator. And when I did fly the simulators, I have one on my phone. It's not the same thing, you know, like the machine is what's so fun. And just the, the way that the sticks work, you know, that's not, that's not what I'm dying for. I'm not dying for a throttle yaw, pitch and roll. I'm really dying for actually having the motors going and, and feeling that specific throttle and having the propellers and damaging the propellers and changing the propellers and feeling the difference and changing the batteries and the actual material machine variations and, and all of the stuff that comes along with you know having a real object that you're using in a real environment you know that's what excites me and that's what makes me feel so great about flying the drones all the time and and a simulator is a computer machine and you're interacting with the machine and you have machine parts and there's all kinds of things that go on in there that make it a machine and you can find the pleasure in enjoying the machine but I guess I feel like interacting with the computer machine is better done like on the internet or with more simple games and then using computer programming and maybe getting into Arduino and specifically a quadcopter flight simulator that's kind of different you know it's not really interacting with the computer the same way that all those other things are it's a really limited interaction that is specifically tuned for me to maybe try a lot more risky things like you know get, get more freestyle tricks down or something like that without having to uh, crash up but you know when I fly through these branches and through the limited environment through this environment that I'm flying in there's all kinds of reasons why it, it's so enjoyable and a simulator is going to have something else that it offers but it's not going to be this so if I want to learn multi-GP courses without going to the track, you know, a simulator is probably my best option. And it won't really give me the ability to control my machine the same way. But because the sticks will work the same way and the course, I'll be able to learn the course, I'll be able to focus on learning a limited number of things. And then later I can continue to develop my skills with the machine so then you know there we have a great application for a simulator and people are making great use of it and I can see myself really enjoying that especially if I got to turn around and go apply my skills to a course the same course in the real environment which is not any time in the near future but as far as just the enjoyment of FPV in my own little isolated world where I just go fly by myself and do my own things, I just don't see the simulator as having any allure for me. I mean, I just don't enjoy it. I mean, I tried it, and it's cool because you can sit in your room and stuff like that, and, and I can really see the benefits of that. And, and when I sit in my room, I do something else. I might play a different video game or or I might, you know, tinker with my quad or I might eat beef jerky and, and just kind of be lazy and, and kind of want to sleep a little bit or something like that. And I just don't really ever desire to get all set up on the sim. You know, I only I got pretty close to set up one time because I'd never had any experience with it. And as soon as I got a little bit, I just wasn't that excited about it. And I just, I, I fly this every day. And I'm really excited about flying my drone. And I just wouldn't do anything that would try to, you know, in, in, a, in a trade. I would never trade flying my drone for a simulator on any given day. Even if I could get a particular value from the simulator, like a new trick. I just would rather not get the new trick. And just get that time on my machine and feel my machine and be so happy about it. So, anyways, uh, the purpose of this video is to make a more recent YouTube video, kind of show my my little setup right now and talk about my batteries. I wanted to make a video talking about how I'm experiencing these batteries. And they are so different. I mean, they're different. 
these are kind of closer to these in those black ones and then these are graphene and they're definitely different in just the way that they feel when you're using the throttle and I guess it's a really long video so that is all